This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbil Mac, a better wood planner, Camp Power, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? Today I want to talk about dry cables and liquid cool cables. I feel like this topic has been more and more uh, common nowadays when we have bigger and bigger batteries and faster charging EVs. A liquid cool cable is a cable that runs from the fast charger to the car and it has liquid in it to cool down the cable to keep it nice and cool so you can run continuous power there or basically continuous current without any throttling. Ionity 350 kilowatt chargers are like that. You can go 500 amp all night long, no problem. And then we have some dry cables that they use other places. There they would, you will would typically get a boost current for a limited time, but it's actually not time based, it's based on temperature. And then it needs to throttle down to a lower current. So I have a fan or a follower, or I don't know, a, a guy who runs a charging network and he emailed me and he could tell me lots of interesting things about this topic. Today, we have a 300, 400 kilowatt fast charger getting more and more popular nowadays. And many of them, they use dry cables. And those dry cables, they typically have 500 or 600 amp boost up to 10 minutes or yeah, it depends, right? Uh, and then after that, it will throttle. I'm not sure exactly how low it goes. It might just try to figure out what is possible, but at least the fallback or the lowest is usually around 300 to 400 amp continuous load after everything has got too hot. But in the daytime, if it's 25 degrees Celsius outside and it's sunny, then you might get the boost, you know, the 500 to 600 amp boost only for five, six minutes. And then if it's really hot outside, like Thailand hot or Spain hot, then instead of getting 500, no, instead of getting 300 amp continuous, you might go as low as 265. So there's lots of electronics here that measures things and tries to figure out what is possible at that given uh, situation. So this means that um, uh, fast charging 400 volt cars like an ID7 Pro with a 91 kilowatt hour battery or the e uh, Mercedes EQE or maybe a, a Volvo EX90 or the Pulsar 3 and also especially the Hongxi EHS7 might trigger this, uh, you know, this limitation because they tend to charge quite fast and it's 400 volt. So um, uh, the guy here, he has an ID7 during summer when he charges his ID7, after five to seven minutes, he's throttled to 120 kilowatt. And from what I remember, ID7 uh, after five, seven minutes should maybe get uh, 150 kilowatts, maybe even more, I'm not sure. So, I mean, it's not a major setback, you know, it's not like leaf rapid gate here, but still you're losing out on some uh, potential speed here. When it comes to 800 volt, uh, normally they don't trigger it. Uh, however, like, recently I've seen um, the Seeker 7X and also the, um, uh, the, the Xpeng uh, G6, G9. They charge so fast that on the only 400 kilowatt charger, whatever, they might pull so, so much uh, current over time that they might hit a little throttle there. I think actually I hit some throttling on the cable when I tested the, the G6, G9 in uh, München. I'm not sure, but I need to test more in Norway. And then my friend told me that uh, a Scania truck with 500 kilowatt hour battery, uh, it has something called a liquid cool CCS2 inlet. And that allows it to stay on the boost, 500 amp boost all the way to 99%, right? Hey, can't passenger cars get it? <laughs> the 400 volt cars didn't get this. No, I guess probably extra loop, extra cooling loop to do this. But I mean, it is possible. And then of course the Scania truck, they, they, they kind of need to do this to, to be able to uh, charge at more charging stations without getting too crazy throttling. But for most passenger cars with smaller battery, this is not the pro problem. But also my friend could tell me that uh, cables, they degrade over time. I didn't know this. He said that uh, one of his cables are four years old and instead of getting 300 amp continuous, he's down to 225 amp. I did not know this, what the heck? Um, but there is a solution to this because uh, Phoenix Contact, they have a 375 amp cable that allows 500 amp boost for 45 minutes during summer. I'm like, hallelujah. 
that should be the solution then. Uh, even if it gets really hot, let's say in Thailand, should at least be able to boost, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And that should be plenty for most cars, even 400, 800 volt cars to charge high enough before it needs to throttle uh, because of the battery uh, anyway. So why don't we just get the liquid cool cables installed? Uh, well, it's all about cost because it will cost more to get this initially and also it requires extra maintenance which costs money and who's gonna pay you yeah and then you just see the price and you don't care about or you might not understand that it has a liquid cooled cable like an ionity or it has a dry cable and what kind of limitation that will cause your car you don't understand that you just see the price and then you don't even know if it's Alptronic or chem power or abb whatever you don't care right but you start caring but once you see that the car is charging slower than it should, but actually most cars won't tell you that unless you're sitting in a sophisticated car like this Neo ET5 or a Tesla, they will tell you on screen what it is. Yeah, actually the, the Mercedes CLA also tells you something about limitation, but you have to dig into the charging thing. It doesn't pop up on the screen like some of the other cars. I should also mention that um, uh, Tesla, they also offer liquid cooled cables in the V3, V4 supercharger, but it can fail. And normally once it fails, well, uh, you plug it in and you initially you get maybe 100 kilowatts something, but usually after just one to two minutes, it will quickly overheat and then broop, you get 37 kilowatts. So what you need to do is just change to another stall and then suddenly you get 150, whatever you're supposed to get. Then it means that that cooling unit in that stall is kaput and yeah, some service guy needs to come and fix it. But okay, so when you if you have a 400 volt car, you are prone to get this throttling. It depends what kind of car you have. So the solution for you during summer is to try to visit a V3 or V4 supercharger uh, because they have liquid cool and they actually go over 500 amp. I've seen 670 amp on a Tesla. I think it was Model S or Model 3, I don't remember. But since we are talking about this, uh, I should mention the whole, you know, uh, some people get the idea that I am against 800 volt car because Tesla doesn't have it yet. No, no, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm not against the 800 volt uh, cars. I'm just against the 800 volt hype. And that is that many consumers believe that 800 volt cars automatically gain some magic powers. One being that it can charge a lot faster than 400 volt car. Okay, again, that is true because you can then go higher power if there is a limitation on the, on the current that we have been talking about in this video. But however, I've seen now lately that many cars, they can actually maintain quite impressive speeds. The new EL8, for example, 230 kilowatt, quite flat, uh, and then still, you know, way over 200 kilowatt for a while. And then the, the Hongxi EHS7, 200 and uh, there was 200 kilowatt flat until 62 percent uh, insanely fast it actually beats many of the 800 volt cars even so actually the the how fast a car can charge boils more down to what kind of cells they use just ask yourself if you take a tesla okay you know that the teslas they don't charge very fast right we all agree on that if you take a tesla battery pack you rearrange it so it becomes 800 volt do you think it was magically suddenly charged much faster than before? Of course not, because the limitation is within the cell. Okay, and then the other thing that I am kind of fed up is that people, they automatically believe that 800 volt cars become more efficient. Well, for some reason, all the 800 volt cars are tested. They, they are not that efficient. They tend to be thirsty because they are SUVs and stuff. But also you see the Teslas are really efficient because, because they use maybe some silicon carbide uh, res well, hardware, right? In the inverter, in the onboard charger. They actually make the cars uh, aerodynamic. They might use uh, uh, efficient motors. You know, they have very good HVAC system, heat management system. There are plenty of other ways to make the car efficient than just to switch over to 800 volt. And when it comes to 1000 kilometer challenge, on the top of the list, most of those cars, they are 400 volt. <laughs> 800 volt cars, they just tend to be thirsty and they just brute force and get fast charging. Uh, yeah, but uh, just they, they couldn't, I mean, they could have uh, made the car more efficient in other ways. But you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not against 800 volt architecture. Ultimately, we're going to get it, especially on bigger batteries. Uh, and trucks, of course, it makes perfect sense. But it's just that 
with the current technology we had a couple of years ago, or actually several years ago, uh, battery tech, as long as the cars cannot maintain 200 kilowatts for too long, then 800 volt didn't have any advantage. But of course, nowadays, when we have those 6C or 5C batteries from China, then 800 volt makes perfect sense. But it actually means that you could even make a 50 or 40 kilowatt hour battery that is more affordable, and they could still be operating on 400 volt, maybe because 400 volt cars, maybe they have cheaper components than 800 volt cars, I don't know. but. Uh, to make things simple, yeah, maybe in the future we should go 800 volt. But again, like you guys have seen in video, in video, it's not black and white. You know, there are some so-called 800 volt cars that operate at 600 volt only, and then some of the other cars, like Lucy, they go up to 900 volt. So, I also believe that 400 volt cars they're gonna exist for a long time. I read a comment somewhere. He claims that it's like, well, again, okay, from what I, the understanding I understood from his comment that he claims that. Uh, it's almost uh, madness to buy 400 volt cars nowadays and that if you buy a 400 volt car then it's going to be hard to sell it in two three years uh, i'm not buying it or literally because uh, uh the, the 400 volt car there are plenty of good 400 volt cars today uh tesla uh the mev platform um many of the bmws you know the, the audis uh, uh, many of the Chinese cars also they operate at 400 volt. They charge fast. They might be efficient. You know, they are nice. They are, they, uh, nothing's gonna change that in two three years. Simply because the 800 volt chargers they are already backward compatible with 400 volt cars. So you don't have a problem with that anymore. You know. So yeah, so I believe that the 800 volt uh, sorry the 400 volt cars they should exist for like. As long as Chadamo exists, almost, but they're gonna exist for at least 10, 20 more years, no problem at all. And even in, in 10, 20 years, uh, there might be manufacturers there that still makes 400 volt cars for I don't know what reason. But okay, anyway, interesting. This video was mostly about the cables, but also some other topics that uh, <laughs> interest me. And uh, it's always uh, fun to learn more things about how stuff works. So that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.